Hello and welcome to Cartoonist Kayfabe. My name is Jim Rugg. I'm Ed Piscor. Before we dive into today's video, a reminder that we are on the road, closing out October. You can catch me at Jacksonville Public Library, October 22nd for their Comic and Zine Fest. We will end the month at Baltimore Comic Con, October 28th through the 30th, uh, the creative birthplace of Cartoonist Kayfabe. So catch up with us there, and you can find Ed tabling with Uncle Jeff Darrow at Tokyo Comic Con, November 25th through the 27th. Jealous of everybody that'll be at that show. Yeah. Uh, it is cartoon. It is Kayfabe Tober, and these are our drawing prompts. So we still got a couple of weeks to go on this. You can find this list on our social media. And if you participate in these drawing prompts, please tag us on Instagram or Twitter so that we can see your great work and also share that with some of our followers. And uh, man, I've been impressed so far. This is a really fun time. Love seeing the cartoonist Kayfabe Faithful showing off. We are working cartoonists, and that is how we subsidize cartoonists kayfabe, so pick up some of our books. Ed Piscor's Red Room, The Antisocial Network, and Red Room, Trigger Warnings are both available now. These are completely self-contained and can be read in any order. So if you come across Red Room, Trigger Warnings, or Antisocial Network at your local store, start with either volume. You won't go wrong, and you can pick up that second one the next time you come through. Hulk Grand Design Monster Madness is my latest comic book. This is available in comic shops now. The collection will be out in early 2023 as a big oversized treasury edition fluorescent green cover. You can't miss it, but you will want to pre-order that just to make sure Marvel prints enough copies so that you can get yours. Street Angel Deadly Squirrel Live is back in print after almost a year. And again, pick that one up at your local comic shop or bookstore. Uh, Perfect for any fans of action comics. So... Today's video is taking a look at, I believe, Valiant's top-selling comic of all time, Turok Dinosaur Hunter number 1 from 1993. Not just Valiant's bestseller, this is one of the top five comics of that year, and uh, that is a year when comics were still selling. As, as the bubble, the speculator bubble begins to burst, probably 1993, the last great year for these giant numbers, and uh, this was Valiant... In a lot of ways, I think they built to this this moment. This comes out of the Unity crossover. It has Bart Sears, who was doing our uh, How to Draw Comics column in Wizard Magazine. I mean, this thing was built to be a blockbuster. You can even see they went fancy on their Chromium cover, which has still held up pretty good over the years. Let you know Jim Shooter ain't in the No, house. he is not. He's gone. But, man, they cashed some checks off of this book. I don't know the exact number sold, but like I say, top five in a time whenever the top comics were selling millions of copies. Yeah, yeah, which is not unlikely that it sold into the millions. Yes, I, I would I would uh, expect this to be seven figures of copies sold, and uh, I still find this one in dollar bins. So they, they printed enough for everybody to have, have a copy. Absolutely, man. <laughs> and maybe with the kayfabe effect, the guys who invested in maybe 10, 50, 100 copies uh, of every Valiant number one, maybe, maybe there's a little surge. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> So David Michelini, long time uh, I associate him with Spider-Man writer, sure. is on the writing, Bart Sears penciling, Randy Elliott inking. And uh, I mention all of that um, just to give you the heads up on the creative team, but we start out here and ayahuasca trip maybe that uh, Turok <laughs> is going on here in uh, Columbia, South America, June 1987. Those are not cartoonist wrists right there, man. That, that's a hunter. <laughs> Yes, or or possibly uh, a, a sequel for Over the Top. He could be considered <laughs> for it. And Turok was one of those characters from like Gold Key and Western, like Magnus and, and Solar, yeah. that I guess Valiant licensed. And so that was part of the anticipation. His first appearance, I think it was like Magnus 12, 12 was yeah. always like a top book yeah, in, in the back issues in Wizard Magazine around this time because that was uh, a big chunk of what Valiant was doing, you know, having these like sleeper issues and... It wasn't just number ones that you had to buy 10 copies of, Ed. Right, right. Every Valiant comic. Yeah. This this thing, uh, and, and by the way, um, if you go look for, like, what what are the key tour rock comics of, like, Dale Gold Key, or what are the key uh, issues of, like, the Valiant run, um, there are none of the <laughs> Dale Gold Key. It's, like... Four color issue number or whatever is like the first appearance of Turok, and that's worth like a G. But it's like the last issue of this is the only one that is worth anything, like on the aftermarket. All the rest is just kind of toilet paper, you know, worth a buck or whatnot. Why is this worth any? Like this ain't worth nothing, is what I'm saying. Mm. Like like the last issue is the one that's like worth something. This is worth nothing. Um, this feels like this really feels like. Uh, 
adults who have no relationship with their childhoods uh, trying to make comics for little kids. But uh, yeah, this feels like it's it's a bunch of old dudes trying to make comics for kids, and and they're like, this will be cool. Kids will like this, you know, robot dinosaurs that talk. Uh, but it just it feels clunky. It, it doesn't read. Yeah, I'm trying to figure out when Acclaim buys this because it, this goes on to be one of the their video game, com, uh, video game ad, video game ad. This feels built for a video game, and certainly when N64 comes around. It's like one of the greatest N64 games. It was a killer app, a reason to buy the N64. There's a number of these silhouette panels. Like, you know, I've done that silhouette zine and it came from Bart Sears' column on silhouettes and he used all the silhouette panels from this issue. But I love this with the pink and oranges in the sky. That looks like markers or something put it on the, mar the, the sky background colors. Sometimes I think this coloring works and sometimes it really doesn't. Like you'll see things go into mud or you'll see things go into like same color on flesh and background. Yeah. But, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's definitely Bart Sears, I think, is, the, is a big draw for this comic. So the villain of the issue is called Monarch. Mm -hmm. And I don't think it was like when you're reading the text, it's not 100% certain that, that like Monarch is, is a dinosaur. But then when you get to this... And it talks about, like, been tracking his spore, which it makes you understand what these nuggets are. Uh, <laughs> from that one episode of Beavis and Butthead where Van Driesen takes him into the woods to, to, to male bond, I know that spore means turds. So I'm like, he can't be tracking, like, human turds. Like, that would be too far for a Valiant comic. So I'm like, what? So this villain is, it's, it's not, it's a dinosaur. It's a T-Rex. It's a Check out this great bit of storytelling. He comes out of his vision there around the fire, and he's like, uh, I guess I won't have to go too far to find my enemy. My enemy has found me. Yeah. It's a good thing he came out of that vision seconds uh, whenever he did, or he'd have been in trouble. And I guess um, Monarch is a velociraptor. Is that the uh, the breed of dinosaur we're going to yeah, sure. call that guy? Yeah, sure. Jurassic Hot off Park the hills of Jurassic Park. Bart Sears going full burn Hogarth, like just mm -hmm. draw, showing you every muscle group exactly where it goes how it wraps around like this is like the starting place of a lot of people where you just jigsaw puzzle in all of the anatomy and then it takes over time you soften it up and allow the skin to exist up there but but not Boris Sears. like he's giving you every it's very tight every group i love that at the time i mean he was the guy teaching anatomy in, in the wizard you know yes and I was the guy following it. Yeah, me too. I, I mean, I could show you exactly. Uh, not to, like drawing liquid blood in line. Not too too effective. Mm. It's very chunky. It's it looks like um, what the hell is that fake disease where people think they have fibers coming out of their skin? Like uh, uh, the K fibers will know. <laughs> That's then, an interesting the, one to source. And, and they'll also say it's not a fake disease, but like uh, like Morgellons disease. Uh, where like they because like if you look at pictures online like the interpretation is like these like red like fibers that people like see coming out of their yeah. hands and in their skin and they like scratch it off. I wonder if Monarch comes from the uh, the Golden Western comics. I run. have no idea, but like dinosaurs are cool enough. Like you don't need a metal cap it's with talking dinosaurs that do that classic hacky. Cobra Commander, like, roll your S a real long time. Hey, check this out. The lettering is, like, all shifted down. You're right. <laughs> How does that happen? Because <laughs> that's not a, you know, it's yeah, not it's a plate. Everything. Yeah. If, if that were a plate, you would see it in the line art, too. So bizarre. Turok survives because he fell into water, like uh, Predator. And whenever he comes out, he's rescued by a, uh, a, local, a local Colombian who... He's bleeding bad, not in the best of shape, and uh, she takes him away. This is the page that Bart didn't feel like drawing. This is a, this real quick. Uh, a strange one, a strange silhouette, too. It looks like Dr. Moreau like combining some people <laughs> together. There's too many heads in the silhouette. But this is our local drug dealer in Median, and um, dinos well, monsters are attacking his drug shipment. And it shouldn't work that way because, you know, they've paid their, their gold. Gold crossed the usual palms. 
Turok is so mean looking all the time. Yeah, he is, man. Even when he got saved, like, and he's coming back up on land and stuff, like, he looks, he looks ready to go, you know? That's a butch fella. Yes. Deathmate to give you uh, a, a time. Can you believe capsule. this, man? Like, you're trying to sell people on this, and, like, one of those guys has a, has a skullet. skullet? <laughs> Are you kidding me? And the most alpha of them all just looks like Kato Kalin. Hotshot joins the hardcore. It's like a really bad parody. It really is. And I got Jim Lee to draw the cover for issue one, and it still was a stinker. Yeah. Um, this is your image style of, like, the giant figure, full-page figure. His anatomy, it feels liquid. It you, does. You know, like, when he did Brutes and Babe, like, like the, his comic Brute and Babe, with, like, his style lends well to, like, doing the muscles like that, because there's, like, a real, like, taffy kind of play-doh feeling <laughs> Come, uh, she's diving for his lost arrows she's got some perks too man <laughs> like look there's like hard nipples and shit that hair is funny my uncle tom has that tattoo what is that a tattoo of it's almost a rat yeah well my uncle is a black panther mm. and see this is weird storytelling stuff because because she's gonna die you know spoiler spoiler but, like, this panel feels like she's selling you as a villainess. Like, Bart Sears is like, yeah, you know, like, that would be a conspirator, conspiratorial smile. They're going to eat that cat that he killed, that panther. This is Pratt's power forward Bernard Chang. Man, go see our wizard episodes. Uh, he was very happy to be on Pratt's basketball team. Can you believe Pratt had a basketball team? Like, yeah. Yes, I can. You know, let them play the SVA kids or something like that. Yeah, that's a, uh, like, like an L league or something. <laughs> like, like, everybody's running up and down the court with their, uh, with their, um, what do you call it, man? Uh, inhalers. Inhalers. The, uh, the dinosaurs realize that Turok's still alive, and they're heading basically back to kill the village. They want to just torture Turok. They call him T-Rock, because they, because even though they're, they are eloquent, they can't say T-Rock. Mm-hmm. Another one of those great silhouettes. There's a lot of silhouettes. They're on like every couple of pages. You get a silhouette. And you know what? Like maybe every page. These the silhouettes are almost in the shape of like the Dale Goldkey covers. Would would like have like a prominent figure, like you know, pulling pulling back the bow, like do, doing all that Turok stuff. This is what you want too, I think, as a reader, is him fighting hardcore uh dinosaur fight and he's got like the um do you see shades of barry windsor smith in a, in a panel like sure, this sure he's got like exploding arrows and stuff and when you see him doing his thing popping an arrow in a dude's neck and the head exploding uh that that that's video game shit mm -hmm. you know this really feels like set up for that it also feels really different than what i associate with valiant sure you know like like to me valiant's this like talking head sci-fi kind of stuff and at this point this is like much more of an action comic. Not a bad thing, but a little bit different. Doesn't feel like something... I don't know that if Jim Shooter were the editor that this book would look this way. Tim Truman's going to take over at least writing in a couple of issues. Yeah. And then it actually... He he does good work because, like, uh, Scout Scout comics were comics I got real early, and I really, really like uh, Tim Truman's stuff. And I think he likes Del Gould Key shit. You know, he's a Sam, Sam Glansman sure. uh, guy. A lot of people like that stuff. I mean, that was the number one publisher in America for 20 years. Yeah, but not Tool Rock or any of that shit. Like, Tarok always sucks. You get a bump, though. Yeah. Um, our girl kicks kicks uh, Turok out. Yeah, because they're like, listen, I'm going to call dude, him Bart. These, uh, these damn dinosaurs are always going to keep coming back. They're coming back for you. Like, you got to bounce, man. But here's some arrows. Think <laughs> about me. Yeah. Think about me on your way out. I love that he's thinking about her as he walks away and we actually see her. Like, he's not too far down the road and still thinking about her. <laughs> uh, you know what I thought of reading this is we ought to look at Exo Zero. Joe Quesada doing uh, Exo Man Award. Sure, I got that one. Same kind of weird cover, mm -hmm. Tyvek cover or something. Yeah, like indestructible. And also I thought this uh, Knob Row profile of Ted Halstead, if I cover up the age there... Is that dude 52? Straight up, dude. <laughs> 23, he's, man. He was an original Krusty Bunker. Yeah. That's funny. I don't know what that filter is, but I'd be mad. Bob Layton is your editor-in-chief at this point. Harbinger hitting issue 25. Harbinger was my favorite Valiant book back then. And a couple more of these uh, video game ads. It's interesting because they're not Acclaim ads. And Acclaim, of course, the one who will uh, end up buying 
will end up buying uh, Valiant and it, I guess producing the Turok game. It's just so crazy too because it's still the 16, I mean, still the 8-bit era even. Regular Nintendo is out. Yeah, the timeline, like going back and looking at all this stuff from the 90s, the timeline is so much more crunched than I remembered. Totally. And I and I bet like the older we get, like the more that that's gonna gonna happen. And like I my pops, my pops will be talking about stores. Uh, like go here to get fresh luggage, and my mom will be like, that store has been closed. Like that has existed in twenty years. Yeah, right. Yeah, we're there. I'm there. I'm there, kind of. <laughs> you know, like my reference has been who wants to be a billionaire. Like like that shit it hasn't been on TV in a very long time. I don't think. Good to go, Jim? I am. Okay, favors, like, follow, subscribe to the YouTube channel, hit the bell. We'll notify you when new vids are available. Jimmy, tell the people what's out there, man. Street Angel. Get this off the desk. Like, you don't want to be associated with something like that, though. <laughs> I like to sell you don't those hurt numbers. Your, yeah, yeah, you don't want to hurt your brand. Street Angel, Deadliest Girl Alive, back in print from Image Comics. Uh, eight complete stories, perfect for this upcoming holiday season, all self-contained. Hulk, Grand Design, Monster Madness. These issues are out now, and the collection will be out in early 2023, oversized treasury edition with about 40 extra pages. So pre-order that one now so that Marvel knows how many to uh, to print. And join me on patreon.com slash jimrug where you can see a lot more of my comics and art. Red Room Trigger Warnings, Red Room the Antisocial Network, trade paperbacks in stores now, Murder on the Dark Web for Fun and Profit is the name of the game in Red Room Comics. Uh, each of these books is completely self-contained. Each contains four separate stories and each contain more than 70 pages of content you're not going to be able to get anywhere other than from these specific books. Go to my Patreon uh, for three bucks. You'll be able to get all of this material plus the new strips that I'm serializing before they hit paper. Uh, that's less, at this point, less than a penny a page uh, for these strips. And you could get to uh, these links to order, pre-order, and hit up the Patreon at my link tree in the de description below this video. Jimmy, tell the people what else they have. Subscribe to the Cartoonist KFAB newsletter at the links below this video. You can also find Cartoonist KFAB t-shirts, merchandise, mugs, fanny packs, and more at our spread shop at the links below this video. Another great way to support the Cartoonist KFAB channel, given those marching orders, will be on our way. Read more comics.